Hi everyone, Jamin here from Import Data and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to group FIFA 20 players with similar skill sets using hierarchical clustering algorithms. As always, don't forget to smash the like button if you find value in this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Alright, so let's get started. Alright, before we start coding, let me briefly explain to you what the hierarchical clustering is and how it works. As the name implies, hierarchical clustering clusters the data in a hierarchical manner. Unlike k-means clustering, you don't necessarily have to specify the number of clusters. And the results are summarized in a dendrogram which looks like a tree-like plot. And the plot is drawn in a bottom-up manner, also known as agglomerative clustering. So first you start with the individual observations, which are known as leaves, as clusters, then move up by merging leaves into branches. Then the branches are merged with other leaves or rather branches, and eventually it reaches the top when everything is merged into one single cluster. So these are the examples of dendrogram. If you look at the middle dendrogram, the dendrogram is cut at height around 9, I guess, which makes two different groups within the data, or within the dendrogram. And if you look at the third one, the dendrogram is cut at height around 5, which results in three different clusters. So these are leaves, and then these are branches, and eventually it reaches the top. So how do you interpret a dendrogram? Like we saw earlier, we cut at an appropriate height to get the num desired number of clusters. And vertical axis is used to measure the dissimilarity between clusters. And in a dendrogram, lower height means the clusters are more similar. Horizontal axis doesn't indicate the similarity. So in the next plot, I'm going to show you what it means. So in the dendrogram on the left side, we can see that number 9 and number 2 are close to each other in a horizontal axis. However, in the actual scatter plot, they're really far from each other. So this indicates that even if they are close in a horizontal manner, that doesn't necessarily mean they're, they are similar. And there are two main methods that hierarchical clustering algorithm measures the similarity between clusters. First one is the metric based distance. And as you can see here, Euclidean distance is um, commonly used. And these are the types of linkage that metric based distance uses. So the first one is complete linkage, which is the furthest neighbor method, and it is used the most. And the second one is single linkage, which is the nearest neighbor method. Third one is average linkage. And then the last one is centroid linkage, which is not preferred. And another way to measure the similarity between clusters is correlation-based distance. And it uses this formula, covariance between the clusters divided by the variance of cluster X times the variance of cluster Y. And here's examples of distance-based metrics. So A is single linkage, which uses or which calculates the distance of nearest neighbors. So two and four are the closest to each other. And figure B is um, complete linkage, which, you, which calculates the distance between the farthest points, which is one and five. And figure C uses average linkage. So basically it calculates the distance between all the points and average them out. And here's an example of correlation-based metric. So if you look at plot um, two, the green one, and plot one, the yellow one, they are highly correlated. However, that doesn't necessarily mean they are close to each other. So if you look at plot one and plot three, even if they are not correlated, their distance are closer than it is between one and two. And next, I'm going to talk about some of the drawbacks of hierarchical clustering. So hierarchical clustering is computationally very expensive, which means that it is not suitable for large data sets. The time complexity of hierarchical clustering is O of n squared times log of n. I have a question for you guys. What would be the time complexity for k-means? If you know the answer, let me know in the comment section down below. And another drawback of hierarchical clustering is that it is very sensitive to noise and outliers. All right, so now that we have an understanding of what hierarchical clustering is and how it works, let's actually try to code it using the same data set from part one. All right, so first I'm gonna load the data set. Awesome. And I'm going to run this whole cell and this code is from part one where I explained how the k-means cl clustering algorithm works. 
So if you haven't checked it out yet, feel free to check it out in the comment section or in the description box below. So basically I select um, numeric variables plus the player's name. And I'm only extracting the players whose overalls are above 86. And here I'm replacing the null values with the mean. And here I'm um, saving the player's names for later. And here I drop the player's name so that I only have the numeric values in the data, data frame. All right. And here I'm standardizing or normalizing the data. And here is where I use average link to draw the dendrogram. And as you can see here, the dendrogram is grouped into two positions. Oh, let me actually change the background so you can you guys can see better. Awesome. So yeah, basically it's grouped into two different positions, goalie versus the rest. And let's draw another dendrogram using single linkage. Here it's also grouped into the goalies versus the others. And let's draw another dendrogram using centroid linkage. And again, it is grouped into goalies versus others. Right, is it? Yeah, these are all goalies. And these are all the other players. And last but not least, we're going to draw another dendrogram with complete linkage. This one is grouped into three different positions. So, so the first group is goalies. And the second group in red are, looks like they are, yeah, they're defensive players. Laporte, Van Dijk, Koulibaly. And the third group in green, they are the offensive players. So based on these dendrograms, we can conclude that the complete linkage seems to group players most accurately. But that's it for this video. And again, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to provide you guys the, the link to this uh, repository, my GitHub repository in the description box below as well. And see you in the next video.